I think that the Bamboo Lab A1 Mini is one of the most underrated 3D printers available on the market today. Not only does it have a lot of the features we've come to love and expect from Bamboo Lab, it offers fantastic print quality, but it is also now at an incredible price. For instance, you can get the A1 Mini standalone for just $249 in the US or £230 in the UK, and for that you're getting what I believe is one of the best small 3D printers out there. In fact, it is one of the best TPU printers, period, and it has become a real go-to model for people printing things like miniatures when used with the 0.2mm nozzle. Now, today, I ain't going to be talking about miniatures, but what I am going to do is give you a quick overview of the spec of this printer. It isn't a review. I'm just going to go back over what the features and specs are, and then I'm going to talk about using this printer for both PLAs and walk you through my process for using this on TPU, because I think this printer is the best TPU unit out there. Now, I know many people get put off by the bed size on this printer, but I think that is a ruse, and most people never print anything more than you need on this printer here. And whilst there is the odd user that might need something bigger, for most people, this printer is going to be absolutely fine. OK, so to start, I just want to give you an overview of its features and specs, just so you've got an idea of what this printer is all about. The A1 Mini is a bed slinger, Bamboo Lab's first bed slinger in fact. It is capable of printing up to 500 millimeters a second, and it has a build volume of 180 by 180 180. Now, that is smaller than you see on some of the other printers. However, I think most people are going to be fine with that. It is very rare I even print things over the size this printer is capable of, but what it is ideal for is things like TPU and miniatures, and if you're someone who's into FPV or you're someone into model making, I don't think you're going to struggle with the build volume that this printer has. What is great about it is that it has all of the usual stuff that we've come to expect from Bamboo Lab. So, for instance, it has built-in Wi-Fi. You can print directly to it from the Bamboo Handy app. In fact, you don't even need to slice your own files. You can go onto the Maker World website, download something someone's already made, hit print, and it will come out on the printer ready to go. But if you did want to slice your own files, don't worry. You can still use Bamboo Studio, and you have all the usual functionality that comes with that. The hot end is capable up to 300 degrees C and the bed up to 80 C and it's designed for filaments such as PLA, TPU, PETG and PVA. You can get this printer as the standalone model you see here, but you can also get it with the AMS light as well, allowing you to do multicolored printing. I do have the AMS light here, but I'm not going to be concentrating on that today. We're going to be talking about this printer more as the standalone model that you see here that you can get for that $249. It also has all of the other features and capabilities you've come to expect. So we've got filament runout sensor, tangle sensor, as well as power loss recovery as well. And again, whilst it is a small printer, it is is a fully featured printer and you're not giving up on features even at this price point. For me, one of the real biggest benefits of this printer is footprint and noise. Not only is it small on the desk like you see here, it is also really quiet in standard use as well, especially compared to some of the more modern, bigger printers that have very loud fans. Don't get me wrong, when you kick the fans in on this, it is loud. But with the Bamboo Labs noise cancellation and in standard prints, it is much less intrusive than many of the other printers on the market, meaning that you can use it in a more domestic situation and you don't need a dedicated room for it. Really, more than anything, what Bamboo Lab delivered with the A1 Mini is a printer that is easy to use, easy to set up, and basically just works. Now, what we're going to do next is take a look at some standard printing, and then I'm going to move on to the TPU and talk about it in that respect, especially around FPV. OK, so for our first print, we're going to just do something in PLA. Now, I'm going to use the Maker World app for this. I've got it up so you can see it on the screen. I'll put it on the side there. And as you can see, there's lots of pre-sliced files available for you. You can choose anything you want. What I'm going to do is search for Pirate Key because there's something my child saw that he wanted me to print. Uh, there it is. Skeleton key with skull and crossbones. We're going to do this in red PLA. This isn't bamboo PLA. It's just one of the other high speed PLAs from another brand. And to print this is really quite easy. We're going to select print. We're going to select our printer from along the top. So for me, we're going to select A1. 
we're going to click print down here and we're going to select the options that we want so we want the a1 mini textured pei plate and then we're going to select the filament generic pla uh, it's actually PLA high speed, so we'll select generic PLA high speed. I'm going to leave the time lapse option off because if I leave the time lapse option on, it'll take images, but it keeps moving the head out the way and it slows everything down, and I don't want that for today's print. So I'm simply going to click print now. That'll send it to the printer. That should then appear on the screen at some point. There is a message there at the moment. There we go. It's kicked in. So what that's going to do now is download it to the printer, start the pre-actions, which is the things like the auto bed level, the calibration, the purge, and then the print will start. At the start of every print, the A1 Mini will go through a series of calibrations. For instance, it will do its bed level as well as its input shaping and all of the calibrations to make sure that your print comes out as good as possible. This does take a bit of time at the start of the print, and you may hear the printer make some strange noises, but don't worry, it is all perfectly normal. Now this is one of the things I did want to highlight about the A1 Mini that I love, and that is the noise. It is much quieter than many of the other printers. Yes, you can still hear it when the fans are running, but it's certainly not like the bigger brothers, the P1S or the X1. All of these newer core XY printers are much louder than bed slingers. And the great thing about this is you could have it in a house, you could have it in a bedroom, and it's certainly not going to disturb people around you too much. Okay, so the prints are complete. Let's take a look at how they've come out. Now, if I just lift the bed off, and what we will do is zoom in just to give you a look. As I've said, this is not Bamboo Lab PLA, but overall, I think that's come out really nice. Let me just, let me focus this so you guys can see a bit better. There we go. Printed at point two. I don't know what the quality of the model itself was like, but these prints seem to have come out really nice. Let's just pop them off the bed. Ooh, there we go, came off nicely like that. And then it's the two halves of the key, so what we would need to do is glue them together to give us our complete key. But overall, nice, quick and simple prints. Next, we're gonna print something a little bit more challenging. We're gonna do it in my Purple Sparkles PLA. And we're gonna take a look at this model here that I've downloaded from Maker World. It's called Teddy Bear with Knitted Heart. It's something that has a lot of different textures as part of the print. So for instance, if I hop over to Bamboo Studio, you can see it here. It's a very interesting print with regards to the different areas. You can see you've got this knitted section here in the middle. You've got the teddy bear, and this will just give us a nice indication of how well this printer can actually deliver results. So what we're going to do is set this to print in PLA. I'm going to choose generic PLA because, again, this isn't a bamboo PLA. This is actually a Prusament. We're going to choose, though, the very fine layer mode on this. I'm going to choose 0.08 millimeters. That is the finest option that this printer has. We're not gonna add any supports. We shouldn't need anything else. So all we should really need to do on this now is slice it. You can see there that I've already done it and it is showing up as a total print time of four hours and 59 minutes. So this is going to be a long one. So I'll get it started and show you what the results are like. Okay, so to bring in the finished print, now this just broke free from the bed as I brought it over. This PLA here is a sparkly PLA from Prusa, so Prusa Mint. It is one of the most difficult filaments that I have to print. It is very temperature sensitive, and in fact, depending on where the printer chooses to do the outer layers, so for instance, sometimes it'll move to the inner layers, sometimes it'll move to the outer layers, that will have an effect on how this filament comes out. Ideally, you want to set this to always print the outside layers first, but I didn't do that here. What I did do, though, is set it, as I said, to very fine, and I just want to show you how it came out overall. You can see the 
the top looks really good that teddy bear has come out really nice there is a slight marking here around the nose and the face that's clearly where it's changed the speed and it's had an effect of the filament. It isn't anything to do with the printer. It was because I didn't select any special options when printing. But overall, I have to say it has come out really, really nice. And it just gives you an indication of what this printer can do. If we look there onto the overhangs on the arms, that heart that knitted heart looks fantastic it really really does i'm really impressed with how that's come out bottom layer looks absolutely spot on again this printer does just such a good job with regards to what it is capable of delivering even on that 0.4 mil nozzle now, as I've mentioned, one of the big benefits of this printer is just how good it is with flexibles. What we're going to do next is a print with some Overture TPU. I tend to use either Overture or Saint Smart. Bamboo Lab do make their own TPU as well, but it's these two that I'm pretty much used to using. Now, I have made some tweaks to the profile, which I'll show you in a minute for this stuff specifically, just to cut down on the stringing and things like that. But overall, the A1 Mini does a fantastic job. So let's hop over to Bamboo Studio and then let's get a print going. Okay, so what I'm going to do is start a new project for this. So we're just going to click new project at the top. We're going to want to make sure that we've selected the right printer. So I need to go down and select the A1 Mini. We're going to make sure we've got the textured PEI plate selected as well. Now, as I've said, I've already created a custom profile for this. So before we look at that, what we'll do is drag over the bracket that I intend to use. This is a DJI Action 2 bracket, one of my favorite ones that I use on my quads. This is what we're going to print here today. It does have a bit of everything. So it's got some overhangs. It's got some areas that need support as well. So we're going to need to make sure that we've got the support turned on for that too. Now, if we go under the filaments, what we want to do is make sure that we've selected TPU. And I've got my own profile here, which is called Mads TPU A1M. This is the standard profile that I have created. And then we're going to select 0.2 millimeter under that. Now, if I just click on this and show you some of the options that I've changed on this, just so you know, let me just open that up a little bit bigger. What we've got is the standard settings here. So you can see the temperatures and everything. If we go to the settings override, here is where I've made a few changes. So we've got the length retraction at 2.2 mil. We've got the retraction speed at 40 millimeters a second. And you can see I've turned off Z hop when retracting and Z hop type. We don't want them on. If we go under advanced, there's no changes under here. And if I look under cooling, everything under here is pretty much the same as well. It's mostly the length here, 2.2 mil on the retraction and then retraction speed at 40 millimeters a second. Now for this, we're going to want to make sure that we do have supports turned on. So we're going to need to enable support. I'll probably use tree supports on this, actually. I do like using tree supports and they're actually a little bit easier to get off on things like TPU just because of the contact point area is generally a lot smaller. What we're then going to do is simply click slice plate. We'll wait for that to kick in. There we go. You can now see that we've got the supports there around the GoPro bracket at the bottom there. And then there's supports coming up for the overhangs at the top here, supports around the corner, as well as supports around that little hole there. But it's much less support material than you may find on a standard support structure, and it should be a lot easier to remove. Okay, so we're all ready to go. We're gonna click print plate and we're gonna send it to the printer. We're gonna make sure we've got the right one selected. We've got bed leveling selected, but I haven't got flow calibration selected because I've got custom settings for my profile and I don't want the printer to change them. We're going to leave time lapse off as well because again it slows down the print. So all we're going to do is click send and get the print started. Okay, so the TPU is finished. Let's take a look at it under the overhead. Now, I haven't really had a look at this yet to see how it's come out, but overall looking very, very nice. 
Let's zoom in so you guys can have a closer look and then I'll show you what it's like to get off the bed as well as get the supports off. Support is always a bit of a challenge on TPU. Not perfect, there is a little bit of something there but it is a clean print, very little wisping. Overall though, I'm really pleased with how that's come out. Something I will also add is this TPU isn't dried. This is just how it's been left in the workshop. It's been out in open air probably for three or four weeks. I am not someone that spends a lot of time drying their filaments. Obviously, if you do dry your filaments, you're going to get a much better result overall. But I'm not someone that spends a huge amount of time worrying about stuff like that. Right, where are we? Where's the focus point? There we go. So, let's see how the supports come off. Oh, I love tree supports on TPU, honestly. It's one of my favourite things. That one's a little on there. We'll take a look at that in a minute. Didn't quite get that bit 100%. Again, you're always a bit of a risk with a tree support that it's doing enough. Let's have a look at the GoPro area. Ah, oh, there we go. It's come out lovely. It's just some left in there. Let me just get myself some tweezers. Supports and TPU is always a challenge. There we are. That's come out nicely. There, just to show you, that's the surface that printed on top of the supports. I'm really quite pleased with that. There's still a little bit of support material in there I haven't recovered yet. Let's get that out. There we go. That just shows you where are we? Where's the focus point? There you go. That again was printed on the supports, nothing loose. That's the top end. Overall very clean. About the only bit that isn't is that top overhang. I'm trying to figure out if it's actually the support that isn't quite right. I don't think it quite had enough on the supports there. That's a support failure more than anything is what I would say. Probably I would tweak Bamboo Slicer a little bit on that just to improve the support on that area there. But overall, the quality of the print is really tidy. I've got no main complaints at all. And this is one of the things, as I've said, I think the A1 Mini is really good at. It's not the fastest TPU printer, but it really does do a decent job overall. Now, one last thing I just want to touch on is with regards to the A1 Mini and miniatures. It isn't something I've done a lot with. However, there is a fantastic video on Tomb of 3D Printed Horrors where he talks about printing miniatures with the A1 Mini. I've got it up here. He's specifically using it with the 0.2mm nozzle and getting some really amazing results. I will put a link to this video in the description. I strongly suggest you check it out. You can see this, some of the results that he's actually had from this 3D printer when using it on certain filaments. Again, he does do some testing with a number of other different filaments as well, but he gets some amazing results on this printer and that's incredible considering this is FDM. This really is into resin territory, yet he's able to show just what you can do. And as I've said, if you're interested in watching this video, please do consider checking out the link in the description. Now hopefully that's given you a bit of an overview of what the A1 Mini can do. As I've said already, this is one of my favourite printers and I really do feel it is underrated. Yes, it doesn't have the largest bed in the world, but unless you specifically intend to print larger items or you have a use case for that, I just don't think most people will need it. And at the price point this printer is today, $249, £230 is just incredible value. And yes, there are a lot of other cheaper 3D printers on the market, but there is nothing that gives you the turnkey out the box performance that the Bamboo Labs models does. And for that price, I don't think anything else comes close. Now, if you are interested in getting one of these printers, there is a link to it in the description. It is an affiliate link. I have been part of Bamboo's affiliate program. That link will net me some commission if you want to use it, but you don't have to use it. You can go straight to Bamboo Labs website. You can go to any website. I also have links for Creality as well as other printers as well. So if you want to support the channel, please do consider checking them out. But if you don't want to, 
don't use it. You can go there directly yourself. Anyway, that's it from me on this one. I hope you found it useful. If you have, please do let me know what you think in the comment section. Any questions, any feedback for this video, put it down there as well and I will try and answer it. Finally, if you'd like to support the channel, there are also links to my Patreon as well as buy me a coffee. I want to say a massive thank you to all of my Patreons. I would not be able to keep making content on this channel without your support. And if you'd like to support us to allow us to keep making content in the future, please do consider checking it out. Anyway, that's it from me. Stay safe. I will speak to you soon.